Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a quilt called Wind Drifter. This is a pattern from Robin Pickens, and it's fat eighth friendly. That's the pre-cut that you can use to make the patchwork. Let me show you what a fat eighth is, because that's not as common as many of the other pre-cuts that I do in videos. So here's a half yard here. A fat quarter, which is a fairly common pre-cut, is just half of the half yard. So here we've got the fat quarter. A fat eighth is just half of the fat quarter. So we can cut it right down the middle. So there is the fat eighth. So you can see you can easily use fat quarters instead of fat eighths, or you can do what I'm going to do, which is use half yards. So here's how much fabric we need. For fat eighths, we need 17. If you're using fat quarters, you need nine. And if you're using half yards, like I'm going to use, you only need five to get enough yardage to make the quilt. But here's the thing. These are all different prints showing in the pattern there. So that's eight prints right there. And then I'm gonna add a little more variety. I'm gonna use 10 half yards so that I will get lots of different prints in my quilt. I'm gonna go ahead and get all of the patchwork cut. I can't give you all the sizes, but Robin Pickens patterns have really nice cutting diagrams that will show you exactly what pieces to cut from all of your fabrics. I have all of the prints cut up, all the pieces cut out to shape here. And what's nice is because I was using half yards, I've got a little over a fat quarter left from each print. So this could be used in another whole quilt, but I suspect I'm gonna pick some of these out and use them on the binding for this quilt. For background, I'm gonna use a nice solid white. I really want all of my patchwork to show up very nicely against the background. And I think that white is really the only color that all these different colors will show up against and have the pattern just pop. Everything is all cut out now. Let's take our background squares and our eight printed squares, and we're going to make half square triangles with these. So the method is to take the background and draw a line across the diagonal. So I'm putting my plastic ruler from corner to corner, and I'm just using a pencil and drawing a light line. I'm here at the sewing machine with all my background squares with the lines drawn, and I'm gonna take one of the printed squares and one background square, line them up with all the raw edges even, and now I'm going to stitch a quarter inch away from that drawn line. My presser foot is just about a quarter inch wide, so it's pretty easy to stitch it. Once I get to the bottom, I'm just going to swing it around and stitch down the other side. The next step is to cut this in half right along the drawn line. And I want to iron these. I want to iron these with the seam allowance going towards the dark color. So the easiest way is to put the light color down on your ironing board and then I kind of peel it open. So I'm trying to make sure that the seam gets open, but that I don't push it too much so that the seam is not straight. So I've got the seam allowance all pressing that way. And once I know it's flat, then I'm gonna add steam. The next step is to trim this down just a little bit and square it up. So it came out a little bit bigger than it needs to be. So we're trimming off to eight inches here. So it's about an eighth of an inch and you want to trim it off of 
a little bit off of the background side and a little bit off of the print side. Don't trim it off of two sides that are both print or both background. And that way we can retain that seam right along the diagonal. The very last thing we need to do is to trim off this one last dog ear so we can just get that little bit of extra stuff off and then the block is nice and square with nothing sticking off to make our intersections thick. The large half square triangles are done and we're ready to make these large pointed arrow shaped pieces here. What we need is we need two sets of the half square triangles and two of the big rectangles and we're going to take those to the machine. First things first, we're going to sew these rectangles side by side. And we'll press the seam allowance to the right. So I'm just pulling it open a little and then drawing my finger pad or my fingernail right down that seam. Next, we're going to take one of each colors of the triangles and we'll sew these together. It's pretty easy to match. We just have to make sure that the seam there lines up when we put them together. And we want to press this seam allowance in the opposite direction. So this one was going to the right, this one's going to go to the left. So I'll just press it there, slide my finger down there, the last pair of triangles gets shaped like this. This seam also goes to the left. The seam allowance is there. And all I have to do now is put everything together which is very easy because there's only one intersection to match here and the seam allowances are nesting. All four of those are stitched up and it's probably a good idea to give this a nice ironing even though we finger pressed it. The ironing makes it nice and flat. The next step is to take all of our small squares and we're going to make half square triangles with these using the exact same method that we used with the bigger squares. I'm back at the sewing machine with all the half square triangles. The next step is to take two of them, make a little point with them, and stitch them together. This first pair, I'll press the seam allowance to the right. Then I'm gonna pick two other ones, and it doesn't matter which colors they are. Sew it the same, the same way. With this one, I'm going to press the seam allowance the opposite way. I'm going to go to the left. I'm going to take the whole stack and keep taking them two by two and doing one to the right and one to the left till I've stitched all these up. Here is what we're using these units for. We're making some columns of flying geese. We're making some with two, some with four, and some with seven. And let me show you why we pressed those seam allowances in different directions. This one's going to the left and this to the right. That way, when we go to stitch this together, the seam allowances are going in opposite directions and it'll be really easy to match that intersection and get a nice sharp point. I've got the rows all stitched together. Here's how they get laid out. The top is all even and I've pressed all of these seam allowances up, these ones down, and these ones up. Then we're gonna take our background pieces. This is going to make that row the same length as that. Got a longer background piece here. We'll stitch onto there. 
and then a big background piece here. So I'm gonna get this stitched together into one big unit, and there's only one remaining background piece, and it's gonna go on the bottom of this big arrow. I'm ready to get these big blocks laid out and see what the quilt's gonna look like. That's gonna go in the corner. That goes next to it. This one just gets spun around 90 degrees. And then we'll spin this one around. And that's the last big piece. And you'll notice we've got one spot right in the middle that needs a final block made for it. These are the last four pieces of fabric that we have left that we haven't used yet. And we're gonna take two of them and we're going to draw a line on the back side. We're not actually making half square triangles using the same method we used before, but we are gonna start out with a line here. I've got all four here at the sewing machine and I'm just gonna pair them up. Let's do, let's do that with that and that with that. I'm just making sure I have a little bit of contrast in pattern or color. And this time I'm gonna stitch on the drawn line. So stitch right on your pencil or chalk line. I'm going to trim away all but one quarter inch here. We'll iron the seams to one side, peel it open again. Now we need to draw a line on the back of one of these. These blocks go right sides together with the seam going in the same direction, but I've got the seam allowances, the top one going that way, the bottom one going that way, and I'm gonna line up all of the edges and stitch on both sides of that drawn line. I'm cutting right along the drawn line. And now we've got a nice patchwork square that will fit right in the middle of our quilt. There, that does look really nice in the middle there. To put the quilt together, we're gonna do it in sections. So I'll start off with this corner and I'll do each of the four corners. Here's how we finish the quilt from here. We're going to stitch this to this block, but only halfway. Once that's stitched, we can stitch that seam all the way down. We can stitch this seam all the way down. And because this is only halfway done, we can stitch this all the way along there. Then we can do the final seam, the final seam there, and the quilt will be ready to go on the quilting machine. The quilt is loaded on the machine, and we need to pick a thread color that will enhance the patchwork and not take away from it. We do have a lot of blank space here, so I wanna fill that up, but it doesn't have to be filled with color necessarily. The quilting will fill it, fill it with texture, even if we use a very light thread, like that light lavender or this light pink. So you could go with a really dark color. You could fill it with flowers or butterflies. I'm just a little worried that that might fight with the patchwork, so I'm gonna pick one of these more neutral colors that's also maybe a little dark for me. This would be perfect. Nice light blue. There's a lot of this aqua in it. I really think the light lavender will look the best. For the quilting pattern, I really couldn't decide if I should do flowers or butterflies. But then I saw this pattern and they're stylized butterflies with little antennas there. And I think that's gonna look really nice on the patchwork. The Wind Drifter quilt is all done, 
and now you can see those big arrows pointing in all four directions like they're blowing in the wind and then you've got the flying geese blocks pointing in all four directions and a lot of nice background which we filled in with these stylized butterflies so it doesn't look too flat doesn't look like it's missing anything in those blank areas I used the binding I used some of the fat quarters I had left over so there's three different colors for the binding the back it's got just a hint of the quilting showing there and I think it turned out 65 by 65 inches which is a nice throw size and the pattern does include instructions for one that's only half this big 32 by 32 so if you like this the smaller one is the same thing but just shrunk much much littler thanks so much for watching our video today we hope you enjoyed it at the end of every video we like to do a giveaway today's giveaway is a double wedding ring quilt this is a very special quilt they're a lot of fun to make they've got curved pieces and this one is done without the curved edges we have a video that will show you how to make this if you would like to make one of your own but today you can win this one it's very easy to enter just click the link right below this video that says giveaway and put in your name and your email address good luck now if you like our videos and you want to support us the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting!